Hey everyone, this is my reaction to the seventh episode of the second season of Hibike Euphonium. And last episode, we had, I believe, our school festival, which was a lot of fun. We got to see characters and all sorts of outfits and just having a great time eating delicious festival food. And we also had a typhoon, which was a little bit less fun, especially because one of our characters decided to just go out into it. Not the best idea. But it did keep the plot going along because she met up with Taki-sensei and learned some more about his wife and the nationals and motivation in that regard. And kind of that, that all came together, right? So now everyone I'm pretty sure is doing their best to music. So let's watch them continue to do their best music in. Mus mus yeah, let's, let's do that. Three, two, one, play. Oh, right. I knew I was forgetting something. She dropped out of college. I don't think she gave a reason why. Man, even being able to see the rain, like, on the flowers, it's a nice touch. Especially because you could also symbolically view that as tears, right? I, I mean, that's why you probably why you have rain on sad scenes, because it's kind of like the sky crying, right? At least that's one of my theories. Although having it rain during sad scenes has been so overused it almost becomes comical. Oh yeah, I forgot they all look so happy <laughs> near the end of the opening. They really do have very similar hair colors. Does it have to be now? <laughs> you, I mean, you should. He's right. Oh. That's cool. <laughs> How do you not know, Azuki-chan? <laughs> not to have somebody fangirling. Focusing on her. Station concert. <laughs> right, didn't even think about it like that. That's cool. <laughs> That's what it's all about. Ah, uh, my nose is just... What is she going to walk in on this time? <laughs> oh yeah, she showed up at the end of... Okay. So, it was her mother. That was one of my theories. She is this type of mother. Mother, you're embarrassing me. Please go. Yeah, it's kind of important. I. <laughs> Tell her, Taki Sensei. Well, uh, a little different. 
This is definitely not that. <laughs> that reaction was very telling. A, a, a lot? And that means you have 100% control of her life? Is, is that how that works? Really not true. Uh, I mean, her body language, you can definitely tell she's not into any of this. <laughs> Poor old man back there. She's... We really can't operate without her. Please don't take her from us. You you could try giving supporting your daughter a shot. Just try it once. If you don't like it, you can spit it back out. Don't let her pressure you. I even if she did, I don't know how much of a difference it would make. I mean, it was still clearly not her will. <sighs> Getting assassination classroom flashbacks. Why can't you just be a mindless drone? <sighs> I was really not ready for this. <sighs> Don't touch me with your dirty hands. <sighs> I don't even know what to say to this. There is just so much baggage we just got aware of in this one scene. Like, I feel like a lot of aspects of Asuka's character make a bit more sense now. Like, again, it reminds me a little bit of Assassination Classroom. The more I think about it. That was just really hard to watch. Like, no student wants to wants their mother to just show up and make make that kind of scene. I think that's one of the worst things that could happen. Just gotta replay it. We could talk to her. Well, I thought that until you said that. But, yeah. Most likely more to it than that. Maybe she does just do it to piss off her mother. Yeah, that was kind of a turning point. <laughs> well, she is one of the harder characters to understand. Yeah, I, this is pretty much what I expected from Asuka. Rude. Not to pressure you, pressure you or anything. <laughs> because it's sad. <laughs> Handle your girlfriend, boy. It's obviously not as Daijobu as she's trying to make it seem, but that's, of course, very in line with Asuka's character. 
but you can really you can really feel her trying to force herself more than usual. Because I mean, she always does this, but it's usually more natural. Probably pretty important. Okay. I think that girl is, uh, is um, playing an instrument close to the camera, and yet she was not the important part of the show. Poor girl. It's kind of cute. I want. I want to hear it too. Yeah, and I told you I don't believe you. I feel like you're like under proportioning it. Just please don't jump. Saying it more than a few times does not make it any more true. I think there's more to it than that. I mean, but we're also like friends, I think. I. <laughs> that was cute, but like you can't just be wash over this with the cuteness. I there's clearly something we need to talk about and we'll deal deal with. I mean, but again, it's it's part of her character. It's not going to be easy to do that. I mean, it's really hard to just practice without thinking about Asuka. And she's a character that lies as naturally as she breathes, so... Okay. These two together. <laughs> just want to come say hi. How are you doing? I can take a hint. I know I should go now. They want their alone time. Every day. You know, her name is Kaori. I think she even has a similar hair hairstyle as uh, Kaori from Digimon. National. Oh, those are footsteps. I was wondering what that sound was. Well, that's not good. And she said everything was daijobu. What's going on? Asuka's what's going on. Like, you should be aware of that. Right to it. <sighs> don't, don't, don't like that pause. Okay. Is there a butt coming? Well, where'd the rumor come from?
Okay, not Zaytaki Sensei, she just said Sensei, okay? Subtitles. Don't add extra words. Unless I misread it, which is possible. I'm a little bit tired. <sighs> well, you're the president, so yeah. The place really isn't the same without Asuka. But. And she's not done yet. Get into this. I respectfully disagree. But I, I get what she means. <laughs> the speech got me close to cheering up than it probably should have. <laughs> that was a way to break the tension. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Please, somebody help me carry this. I keep forgetting Rika's name of the school. It still throws me off a little bit. <laughs> Let's do it. See her dad job, I believe. Everyone starts somewhere. <laughs> Is it could we go? How did she know she was there? I guess our Kumiko senses were tingling. <laughs> they just look happy back there. Ah, the legendary Santa. We're, we're a force to be reckoned with as well. That was Asuka's voice, right? <laughs> Glad you can make it. Thought it was Asuka was a ghost the whole time. <laughs> Just trying to make your way to that crowd. Not that was all animated. Asuka, I want some attention too. No problem. <laughs> there you go.
The girl is breaking you for an unimportant character. Itchy, itchy. <laughs> okay, we have motion. <laughs> it's probably not supposed to be funny. I <clears throat> Here we go. You can, you got this. <laughs> like you can tell, tell she was smiling through playing the instrument. <laughs> Man, she's really doing her best. That was wonderful. You all should be proud. Especially you. Ching concert. Are we going to address the sister stuff? I th I thought the narration was going to be like her saying, no, don't go. That's not what it was. <sighs> Fat cat just laying over there on my bed. Asuka. <sighs> it's 11.30 at night. I'm a little bit tired. <clears throat> it's mine. You can't have it. Okay, that's that was the seventh episode of the second season of Hibike Euphonium, and uh, Asuka was definitely the focus of this episode. I could tell by that one look that uh, Hibiki gave her pretty pretty early on in the episode. It gave me that feeling that this would be Asuka focused, and it was. And the lady that we saw at the end of last episode, who I was like, um, I don't think I recognize this character. Should I recognize this character? Because sometimes that does happen. I'm just, it's this character I'm supposed to recognize and I don't, but this was not that scenario, but luckily, uh, this actually was an unknown character, and it was Asuka's mother. Ah, boy, was it Asuka's mother. Like, what do I even say to that? I mean, this is a pretty, it's a fairly common plot thing, right? Uh, mother's knows best. It's like, no, mother, I, I live my, choose my, live my own life. It was like, I'm your mother. I, I, I decide your future. Like, that sort of... That's right. That sort of story, like it's it's fairly common, right? A uh, child wanting to 
carve their own life path and the parents trying to shove them in their own specific direction. Often this will be like a, there's a family runs a family business, but it's, the child doesn't want to do the family business. So there's some headbutting as a result of that. That's a common uh, version of this sort of thing. But uh, just in general, this mother definitely seems to want to fully control Asuka's life. She is, she's that kind of mother. And like, it's such a pain to deal with because she has some leg to stand on. Like as a parent, you should have a decent amount of influence, right? And be your child is not yet an adult, so they there's definitely the room for like helping to guide them, but that's kind of the key word. Helping to guide them, not like I wanna go here. It's like, nope, you're going over here. Like it's definitely a bit of a balancing act, I guess you might say, right? Like you can be helpful, try not to try to help them not make any terrible mistakes, right? You can try to try to refine their path in life, make sure they don't go down a cliff or anything. But like you gotta, you really gotta know where the line is between doing that and what doing what this mother is doing, right? When you say things that are basically amount to screw your opinion, do what I say. Like once you've gotten to that point, you definitely you're go you you crossed a certain line, and uh, Oscar just kind of like standing there and taking it for the most part. Right? You could tell this is not the first time she's dealt with this sort of thing. Right? And uh, the way Asuka acts around other people, right? The kind of mask she puts on. I think, yeah, definitely a big influence on developing that aspect of her character. Most likely was definitely her mother, you could say. Because she's a rough type to deal with. So if you had to deal with her on a daily basis, because you kind of live with her, you do have to develop a way of handling that, right? And, uh, yeah, it does remind me of, of Nagisa from Assassination Classroom. I guess that's kind of spoilers if you haven't seen that show, but if you haven't seen Assassination Classroom, I, I really think that you were the one that made the mistake, not me. <clears throat> uh, I'm, I'm joking, of course. Uh, there's all sorts of reasons to not have watched the show yet. But anyway, yes, that was that. Was that. And, of course, it escalated to a slap, which is always a hard thing to, to watch, especially because, like, at least in my, in the way I see things, when you resort to slapping someone, you've kind of admitted that you have no good counter argument, that you've essentially lost. That's kind of what it means to me whenever I see a character do that. So, yeah, I really don't know much what, what else I really say about that. Just I, it's very uncomfortable to watch that, especially when like your classmates are kind of watching it too. Like it's just such a horrible thing. It doesn't get much more embarrassing than your parent going in and starting yelling at the teachers and making demands and. And it definitely does not help to literally slap slap your child in front of her friends. Like, that is not, so not okay. But, although I think she did not quit in the end, right? Because I know there was rumors that were going around, but I think Taki Sensei said she didn't, and she did. And she was there for the performance later on, so I don't think she's going to end up quitting. But one, one thing that kind of developed from this was the idea of, like, not relying so much on Asuka, right? Because that is that has kind of been built up somewhat subtly in the show, that she is kind of this all-purpose, you know, superwoman that really is a big part of this group. Really, help, really holds it together. Everyone wanted her to be president, but she she wasn't. But still, very important role nonetheless. But you never want your entire group to just kind of like center around one person as uh, you pull it out, and then it just all crumbles, right? So I feel like there was some a bit of like a bit of a lesson taken from it in that regard. Had a very nice speech from Haruka. As a result of that, Haruka's her name, right? I'm kind of blanking on names a little bit, but I, I'm quite tired. So, and then we had it off with a very nice performance near the end there. So, uh, a good episode. It did have its like secondhand embarrassment, rough to watch kind of moments, but still a good episode for sure. <sighs> so, yeah, I think that's, that's all I got to say. So, if you enjoyed the video, you know the YouTuber stuff you do, right? You get the like button, the subscribe button, the Patreon link, comment button. Any of those, all those would be great to do. But uh, yeah, I hope to see you in the next video. Until then, bye-bye.